I'm Jonathan Portis. I'm a Principal Research Fellow at the National Institute of Economic and Social Research and I'm also a Senior Fellow of the UK and a Change in Europe programme. My name is Matthew Flinders. I'm Director of the Sir Bernard Crick Centre at the University of Sheffield and Chair of the Political Studies Association. So, what does the EU mean for us in economic terms? To answer that question, it's probably worth going back to the origins of the, uh, what we now call the European Union. It actually began with something called the European Coal and Steel Community. So it was always very much uh, an, uh, uh, an organisation designed to coordinate economic policy across Europe. Um, and this, of course, was before the, uh, before the UK actually joined. But the ECSC, the Coal and Steel Community, quickly became uh, something called the, then called the European Economic Community. And the Treaty of Rome, um, as far back as then, set out the four basic principles uh, for the economic functioning uh, of this, uh, this new organization. The four freedoms, free movement of goods, services, capital, and labor. So the EU um, was always, from the very beginning, not just about uh, a simple free, tra free trade agreement, as some people claim. It was about making the European e economies more integrated um, across a whole range of things, not just about free movement of goods or reducing tariffs. Um, so what do those things actually mean now? Well, the most important economic aspect of the EU um, for the UK is undoubtedly the single market. The European Union takes about 44% of our exports. If you add in other countries that are also part of the single market, it gets up closer to 50%. Um, the single market uh, is not just about free trade in goods. It's about harmonizing um, lots of different bits of how our economies function, in particular, the sort of regulations that we apply um, to different products and services. For example, um, food labeling, so that if um, a French cheesemaker wants to sell their camembert, say, in Southampton, um, that they know that the label that they put on it back in the factory will be acceptable to health and safety inspectors um, in Southampton. Another important part uh, of this is free movement of workers. Um, and what that says is that citizens of the uh, European Union member states have a right to work and hence to live um, in other member states. You can move there to live as long as you're not a charge on public funds, you're not overly dependent on the welfare system, um, or you're not a threat to, to public security. Free movement of capital is another one. That means that investment can flow around the European Union, that banks can lend across borders and so on. We are part of one of the most integrated cross-border uh, economic areas in the world. Um, very few uh, there are very few other play, uh, uh, sets of countries in the world which are ec as economically integrated um, as the European Union. There are lots of places which have free trade areas. So, you know, Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. have something called the North American Free Trade Area. That allows um, for relatively free trade in lots of goods. It could well be that beyond the EU, we could sign up new trade agreements, trade agreements that would open up whole new frontiers in economic growth. It could be that looking back in 30 years, membership of the EU was really holding us back. The problem is that actually, until you make the jump, we're never going to really know. That's some of the background about what the EU actually is. Um, how, what sort of economic impact has it had on the UK? Well, on this um, economists are pretty unanimous. If you l simply look at a graph of Britain's relative economic performance um, compared to other European countries before 1973 or so, and then afterwards, you can see that before that period, we were rather underperforming most other European countries. Since then, if anything, we've outperformed. However, there are lots of other things going on that have always made the UK quite exceptional, indeed an awkward partner the City of London, the Thatcherite reforms, the new public management of the 80s and 90s that were then copied all around the world. Lots of different things happening in the UK, which means that economic growth might have something to do with membership of the EU, but it might not be such a simple link. What does that mean would happen if we left? And this is where, of course, it gets much more difficult, because the fact that EU membership has been broadly good for the economy up to this point does not automatically mean that leaving the EU would be a bad thing for the British economy. 
it would all depend on what happened next. I mean, in particular, what our economic and trading arrangements would be outside the European Union. So over the last few weeks, we've seen independent um, and not so independent analyses from a variety of sources on the economic impact of leaving the EU. Um, so there have been analyses by the Treasury, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, um, uh, analysis by my own organization, the National Institute for Economic and Social Research. Um, all of these suggest that um, leaving the European Union would have some negative impact on the UK economy. But, and this is a crucial but, those estimates are based on the historical experience of joining the EU. That is, essentially, they say, joining the EU was good for the UK economy, therefore leaving it would be bad. And that doesn't follow if you, don't, if you believe that history is actually not a terribly good guide to the future. So the real question uh, that ordinary people have to answer in deciding how to vote if they care about the economy is, well, what do we think the impact of leaving the EU would be on our trade? From an economic perspective, the real question is what you think would happen to trade. If trade were to fall, then most economists would agree this would be significantly damaging to the UK economy. But whether trade would in fact fall would depend on what sort of trading arrangements we had um, outside the EU. If we were in fact, after leaving, to be able to negotiate very quickly a set of trading arrangements with the European Union which more or less gave us the same access to EU markets that we have now. After all, and this is correct, the EU exports far more to us than we do to them. And at the same time, uh, we were able to negotiate new trade deals with fast-growing economies like China and India, as well as the US, one of our largest trading partners, then it is possible to argue that our trade would not decrease um, and might indeed uh, actually uh, improve. Um, but, and it has to be said, that in practice, negotiating trade deals tends to be a long, complicated, um, and rather difficult process. So the second big question um, is around uh, free movement and immigration within the European Union. Um, and here, uh, I think, uh, it's clear that uh, most economists think that free movement has so far been relatively uh, uh, beneficial for the UK economy. On the other hand, um, it is also true to say that were we to leave, uh, we would recapture a degree of control and flexibility over our migration policy that we do not have at present. As long as we stay in the EU, we are signed up to basically free movement with other member states. That's a basic principle of the EU. Um, if we leave, uh, we could be more flexible and have somewhat more control. We could choose to accept more skilled workers from outside the EU, or indeed to, choose to, to accept just fewer immigrants overall. Um, would we make those decisions in such a way which was economically beneficial? That depends on what you think government policy on immigration would be um, if we decided to leave.